pyramidal tract as we all know is responsible for skilled voluntary movements predominantly of the distal extremities and it also helps in the adjustment of movements of the proximal extremities and the trunk the pyramidal tract originates from three sources one third comes from the primary motor cortex another one third comes from the secondary motor cortex and the remaining one third comes from the parietal lobe as i mentioned below the areas are there but it's not necessary to remember them after it originates in the cortex it comes together in the corona radiata as shown in the diagram then it passes through a very important uh, area at least clinically which is the internal capsule it passes through the posterior limb of the internal capsule and this diagram will better clarify your doubts about the exact site of the pyramidal tract in the internal capsule you can see in the picture parts of the internal capsule being marked as anterior limb the bend which is the geno and the posterior limb you can see that the red arrow shows the pyramidal tract or the corticospinal tract which is located in the posterior limb of the internal capsule and uh, you need to remember here that the arm and the the fibers are closer to the geno followed by the trunk fibers and the lower limb fibers this particular part in the course of the pyramidal tract is important because it is supplied by the lenticulostriate branches of the middle cerebral artery which is very much vulnerable for ischemia both due to embolism and also due to thrombosis so it produces a neurological deficit despite um, being affected in a very small region of the brain after the internal capsule it goes through the midbrain where when it gets diseased it may also affect the third and the fourth nerve then it goes through the pons where you have the fifth and the sixth and also the seventh nerve and in pons the pyramidal tract is actually fragmented by the cruciate ligaments in the pons and then the pyramidal tract again joins after crossing the pons and you can see in the medulla that the pyramidal tract actually crosses to the opposite side and the picture clearly shows you that a large part of the pyramidal tract about 2/3 crosses to the opposite side and it descends in the lateral column of the spinal cord whereas a small part which is 1/3 descends as the anterior spinothalamic tract sorry the anterior corticospinal tract now this picture will give you a better idea about where it exactly lies in the spinal cord you have three columns that is the anterior column the posterior column and the lateral column the pyramidal tract lies in the lateral column and it connects with the anterior horn cell through what is called internuncial neurons and when it controls the skeletal muscle at the segmental level you can see that the anterior horn cell is connected to the motor end plate and at each level the the uncrossed fibers from the other anterior corticospinal tract also joins with this fibers and innervates the motor end plate you can see more clinical videos in this channel thank you